And we are live. Welcome in to Betting on the Bayou. This is week number number nine, I believe, for, no for college football already. Boy, time is flying by. Uh, I'm Patrick Fry. Of course, Ryan, the reseller over there. What as, uh, I tell you what, Ryan came off a very good, say very good, a good week eight last week. I had three bets and uh, I won all three. So I was three and oh, yeah. for for the week, uh, up three units. I had Alabama minus 21. That one, uh, you know, Alabama, after coming off the loss, Alabama was almost a lock every time, especially the last like four or five years. Um, they won by 24. So they miss, they, they tried to get the shutout. Mississippi State scored on the last play of the game. But even if they had allowed them to go for two, they still would have won by 22 and I still would have covered. So uh, not too much of a sweat there. Also, I had, I'm trying to pull it up here. This computer today, even on, I guess on both of our ends, the computers are just being very slow today. I also had Wade Forest minus 20 and a half. They won. Uh, they started a little slow, but they picked it up later on in the game. And then also I had, I'm trying to remember, oh, Oklahoma State plus six and a half. They actually won outright. I debated on picking them outright. What I did was I picked them six and a half against the spread. And actually in my pickums, my free pickums I do on some sites, I selected Texas to win the ball game. And Texas was winning and kind of had control. And then um, Oklahoma State came back, won the game. Um, Spencer Sanders, their quarterback for Oklahoma State, he was in question, which made me sweat just the, the bet before it, the game even started because I knew if Spencer Sanders did not play, uh, I personally did not like the, the chances of Oklahoma State covering the six and a half, but he did play. He played very well. They uh, won the game. Wish I would have taken them on the money line, but uh, nonetheless, a 3-0 and day, and I'm up three units uh, uh, from this past week. I'm actually 7-1 and one in my last eight bets, so I'm on a little bit of a hot streak here, uh, Ryan, last couple of weeks, so I'm hoping it can continue uh, this week. I really, really there's a lot of games that to me are very intriguing from a betting standpoint. Uh, I have them all written down here at the FBS level. Unfortunately, yet again, I guess WinBet decided to start slacking here on the back end of the season. The no FCS lines. I can double check here to see if any have been released, but I checked earlier today and on WinBet and none had been um, released yet. So, uh, but I'm gonna check here real quick and I'm gonna see. If they probably had some part timers uh, quit on them too. The part timers were probably doing the damn FCS lines. Maybe so, or they just decided to wait till later in the week. I don't know, but yeah, no, there's no FCS lines here. But we'll talk some McNeese, obviously, and the some of the Southland Conference matchups, and then we'll get into the FBS uh, coming up here. But yeah, looking forward to continuing. The last two weeks, I've had really good, uh, two good Saturdays, and I'm looking to have a third straight good Saturday here. The Betting on the Bayou show is for entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be professional betting advice. If you lose your ass at a sports book, Betting on the Bayou cannot be held responsible. Gambling problem? Call 1-877-770-STOP. And before we get to the meat of the show, Patrick, new sponsor. It's oh. the it's it's the grand return of CBD for you.net. All right. Thanks for coming back, old CBD for you.net. Yeah, 50 to 80% got, they, off CBD products. Look, you're going to get a better deal on this website with it being shipped out than anywhere in your local area because these guys jack up the prices too much. 50 to 80% off CBD products. We're talking, you can get CBD for your pets, vapes, candies, oils, creams, chocolates, Delta 8, 9, and 10, Patrick. So if you want to get a little buzz, Right now, Delta 8, <laughs> 9, and 10 are legal at the moment. All you got to do is just go to the website, wwwcbd 4 you That's cbd4you.net. Yeah, I was about to say, um, they, are the chocolates actually available on the website? It seemed like, you know, for all the years <clears throat> we've kind of messed around with with uh, this uh, cbd for ucnet as a sponsor on, on various things we've done. I've always wanted to go get some chocolates because I'm I'm just a chocolate fiend. And every time we go on the website, the chocolates are like sold out. They're like the hottest commodity, CBD chocolate. Now that with the Delta 8 stuff in there, the good stuff, um, they're probably even more of a commodity. So, um, oh, yeah. 
You can get is there chocolates. Any, is there any and chocolates Delta, available in there? Have you seen? You can get chocolates in Delta Eight, Delta Nine. You can. They also have THCO, which is legal at the moment, which uh, apparently is like eight times, uh, I guess, more potent than Delta Eight. Okay, Let's see, well, chocolates, Delta Nine chocolates yeah. are available. We'll have to have a conversation about the difference between Delta Eight and Delta Nine, and versus, I guess, like you know, non Delta Eight, non Delta Nine, like I guess the regular stuff. I don't know. Right, all the deltas are the ones that are going to give you a buzz. All righty. Well, um, and they still have talk about some anti-inflammatory pro uh, properties. Okay. All right. I we'll have to look more into that. I've always wanted to look into it, but uh, never, yeah, but don't buy, never have the don't, time and think hey, about it. Don't do like you did last time, Patrick, and get swindled at a local CBD gas station or shop because they're marking this stuff up like a thousand times what it actually costs them to buy it. I did that one time. Um, I just wanted to go in there real quick, just see what it was like. But CBD just, I don't know. It, it didn't. I just had like some drops. I put it on my tongue. And like, I don't know. It did. Well, yeah, the, the regular CBD has no psychotropic effect. It's just to help with inflammation and pain. So, I mean, yeah. and you may have not taken enough. I tried to take more as I went along because I was like, eh, like, let's see. But I don't know. Maybe I'll try some of this other stuff one day. Yep. So All let's right. talk about that niece a little bit. Coming off of a devastating loss again last week, but the Pokes played hard. They really did. Yeah, they really did. I mean, they they fell into a hole very quickly, and then next thing you know, they had a, a big burst of energy. They did, they were down fourteen nothing to Nichols, and then scored twenty nine straight, and then I think twenty straight from Nichols after that. So it was a game of runs, um, and you know, McNeese just fell short, uh, unfortunately. And um, they like you said, they played hard. Uh, McMahon was uh, a man on a tear for a little while, and. It seems like, you know, they had that little burst of energy. Unfortunately, they didn't have that burst of energy for 60 minutes. They only had it for like a quarter and a half. And, uh, you know, if, you, if we, see what the, we see the potential there, obviously, but they just need to play to that potential for 60 full minutes now. And, um, you know, this week, tough, tall task with Southeastern coming into town as homecoming. So, you know, if we can get that McNeese team, we saw – at that 29 unanswered points against Nichols, we can see that for 60 minutes this week. Hey, you know, I think the Cowboys might have a shot here to, to shock the world, but, you know, Southeastern's a much different animal than, than Nichols. And Nichols was a team this year that had high expectations coming into the year. And, boy, they have not played to those expectations. It's kind of the same story as McNeese. McNeese had some expectations, I think, uh, at least better expectations than where they're currently sitting. At least I even thought they'd be – you know, they'd have more wins right now than they currently do. But uh, Nichols was sort of in the same boat. And, you know, we were starting to see, like I said, bits and pieces of what McNeese, what the, the potential of McNeese. They just have to put it together for an entire game. Can they do it, you know, this week? It's homecoming. A lot of folks are going to be there. It's a big week. Uh, homecoming week's always a fun time for McNeese here in Lake Charles. And, um, like I said, Southeastern's no slouch, certainly. But, um you know, like I said, if we can get a 60-minute ball game from this uh, McNeese team that we saw score 29 in a row against Nichols last week, I, I think the Pokes have a shot to, to maybe knock off the Lions. Now, I heard that Knox Kadem got injured last game, and there may be a chance that he doesn't play. So it'd be interesting to see who Coach Goff throws in there. Well, who's the other? Um, don't they have another quarterback? Yeah, we got Cam Ramson, but he didn't come in when Knox got hurt. Ryan Roberts did, the third string quarterback. Oh, so he may be done know. with Cam. <laughs> the yeah, whole Cam I mean, thing yeah, maybe may be so, uh, yeah. uh, just a memory now. It could be. Um, well, I guess we'll find out. You know, on Saturday, it's one of those things in college. You know, we probably most likely we will not know until they they kick it off on Saturday night. So. Um. Hopefully Knox Kadem's, you know, I guess healthy, but um, that, that that could be a that could be a big a big not having the starting quarterback healthy for for the game against Southeastern, so that could that could play a role big time. But um, you know, if he's like I said, if he's healthy and we can get a sixty minute, you know, 
performance from from that team, that burst of energy we saw last week. Uh, I wouldn't count out the Pokes, but um, uh, overall, you know, Southeastern, even even if we get that 60-minute performance, I mean, Southeastern may still be too much for McNeese for all we know, but uh, this is the, the tail end of that that tough gauntlet they sort of had uh, with Incarnate Word, then A&M Commerce, then Nichols, and, and now Southeastern. After this, they have, I think, Houston Baptist or Houston Christian, uh, Eastern Illinois, and then Lamar. To, to end it out. So they do have a very winnable back end of the schedule to kind of get some momentum going into next year. Cause uh, I mean, obviously the playoffs are out of the question at this point. So it's, it, it, I tell you what, it, it's going to be a fun atmosphere because it's homecoming, but how long, you know, how long will it be fun for in the game? I don't know. Um, Southeastern may come in here and just run away with it, but um, you know, I, I certainly encourage all the, the, the Pope fans to head on out to, to the Cowboy Stadium on Saturday night. It's going to be homecoming, like I said. The parade's on Thursday. I'll, I'll be out of town. I'll be in another state uh, this weekend for a wedding. But uh, I'll be I'll be, I'll be, be watching the – be keeping an eye on the Pokes at least and seeing if they can hang around with Southeastern. But, you know, before the season – even before the season, I said this is not going to be a win. I don't expect it to be a win. So – but I, I would love to see the Pokes compete, certainly, and have – you know, a, a good burst of, of, uh, of how can I say this, um, some efficient play like they had against Southeastern when they scored 29 in a row. Uh, I want to see some of that against Southeastern now. We saw it against Nichols, not that great of a team, but let's see them do that now against a really good team in Southeastern, and, and we'll, we, you know, it shows that we're maybe moving in the, in the right direction. You know, what I, you know what I don't get? I don't know who makes the schedule, but obviously they didn't get the memo that your homecoming game you're supposed to win because it's a big Debbie Downer if you don't win your dadgum homecoming game. So why don't we start league play a little bit earlier in our schedule and let's go ahead and move down that division team, uh, that division two team down to our homecoming game so we can actually beat up on somebody during homecoming. Either that or just schedule Lamar for, for homecoming. I mean, it's... <laughs> Just do that, you know, or or Houston Christian. As simple as that. Yeah, that too. Or uh, Eastern Illinois too could be a, a very, obviously a very winnable game, but um, that that's another thing too. Yeah, maybe like the Mississippi College game, you can start league play a week early and have Mississippi College fall in this week, and you know we get the win that way. But um, you know, I think in college, you know, losing, you know, the, playing and winning the homecoming game is not as big of a deal. I guess in college, and it's like in high school, you know, high school, it's, it's a bigger deal, but in college, I, I don't, I couldn't even tell you. I, I think maybe I just know this by default. Cause somebody mentioned it the other day, but like, I think this past weekend was LSU's homecoming. Um, before the season, you could ask me when's LSU's homecoming. I have no, no idea. No clue. Yeah. Only know McNeese's homecoming because obviously we live in the community and we, I know the festivities leading up to it, but you know, homecoming games and, college to me are just eh, it's whatever at, the, at these bigger colleges maybe not so much because it's more of a professional type feel to it because most of these cats are going to be moving on playing professional football but at the same time there's a reason why mcneese is called ryan street high because <laughs> it's got <laughs> it's kind of got a high school feel to it i mean it's a small college and you know people around here i guess i don't know I don't know the, the correct words for it, but it just has more of a feel of a high yeah. school type atmosphere. It's, down it's here like, you know, school. It, it's equivalent to a small town that has one high school in it. You know, this is a, we're not a small town by any means, but we're a, I would say a smaller city with one big college in it, you know? So, um, it, it's kind of the equivalent of that, I guess. I'm just on a bigger, on a bigger scale. It's equivalent to a small town, with one big high school um, where, you know, everybody shows up for the game. It's the only show in town. You know, McNeese is the only show in town when it comes to uh, college football here in, in Lake Charles. So um, no one else is even close. And that's, you know, that's my analogy for it, I guess. Real quick, Patrick, if I ever win the Powerball, I got a new idea of what I'm going to do with it. And I need okay. your help. Okay. I want to get a football program started at Suella Tech. I want the Flying <laughs> Tigers to have a football program. We'll build them a stadium and everything. 
Call them the pilots because they're right there by the airport. I need you to be a scout. A scout? I can't scout for nothing. Yeah, you can. You know all the good high school players. I mean, yeah, I could tell you all the good high school players, I guess. But exactly. That's I what I need tell you, you for. Like, I need you to find all the right. all the good players that are, that the other big universities aren't snatching up. All right. I, I can try, but let me know when you win that Powerball. I'll get on it. Let me know when you win that Powerball. I'll get on it. Some kids from Sleesville. Yeah. You know, that are flying under the radar, like, but they're great athletes. Well, well, they got one kid from Leesville right now. He, he ain't flying under no radar. He's, he's running everywhere <laughs> on everybody, so. Uh, and then, and then one more thing that I was thinking about for Magnese before we move on, you know, I think coach golf is going to have his work cut out again this off season because, you know, a lot of players that we have on this team just don't fit. They don't fit the offensive schemes. They don't fit the defensive schemes. I don't know if coach P is going to be back next year. He may want to roll on, uh, our defensive coordinator. He may want to go somewhere else, but if he does stay, I think a lot of kids are going to hit the transfer portal for Magnese because they just know they don't fit. They, either they don't fit the culture or they don't fit the schemes. And I think he's going to have a pretty big task on his hand, not only, you know, trying to get some high school kids in here, but they've been hitting the JC, uh, the Juco is pretty hard. So I would imagine he's going to lean on that a lot. Yeah. And I, you know, this could be his first, I guess, if, you know, his first full off season, if you will, uh, where he can really go out and recruit his guys that he wants to put in this offense on his team and whatnot. And obviously, you know, you, you're going to slowly weed out the guys that maybe don't fit your system, don't fit the culture, and slowly bring in the guys that fit the culture, fit the system. And, you know, hey, look, Rome wasn't built in a day. So uh, I, I did not expect Coach Goff to turn this thing around overnight. Um, you know, this ain't Valdosta State. You know, we weren't uh, coming off a national championship when Coach Goff took over. So, obviously, uh, this is more of a Tiffin situation for Coach Goff. But – uh, even uh, I would say we're, I guess, in a little bit better of a situation than maybe Tiffin was when he took over Tiffin and he eventually got them uh, to where they, they needed to be. But uh, it's going to take some time. But we gotta we got to be patient and we got to let Coach Goff do his thing. And, uh, you know, like I said, year, even next year, uh, obviously this year, you know, we have one win. Let's say we lose and – we went out after this. We have four wins, so that means next year you need four more wins. You want to see improvement every single year. You don't want to see digression. You don't want to see that. So, but uh, obviously, we he set the bar. The bar has been set pretty low from his first season. So he's uh you know not 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 too much pressure for next year to do better. You know, and a lot of the criticism that people are having for Coach Golf right now is, oh, he was given the keys to a great program at Valdosta. You know, his first year there, he went to the playoffs. The second year there, he went to the championship game. Well, he also gave the keys to a great program to their next coach. I don't want you to look this up, Patrick. What's the overall record of Valdosta State right now? Well, let's see. They, I would guess they played about, what, eight games? games eight how games, many games? Yeah. That, they played eight games. Okay, yeah. I would say their record is five and three. No. Six and Which, two? No. <laughs> is it like worse one more guess oh yeah it's way I'll, worse oh my god i'll say two and six that's close they're three and five and one and four in conference wow so okay so that's I, just with gary golf leaving because not a lot of their players left because they wanted to stay and win a championship only a few players came over from valdosta state to mcneese the rest yep. of them uh they're finding out what post uh gary golf looks like over at Valdosta State. Well, that you know that that that's a that that's a that's a good look for Coach Goff. Uh, the fact that he was able to maintain a you know a championship level program there, and uh, you know within one year of some somebody else taking over it, you know, looked like Ed Orgeron in 2020. You know, so <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that's a good look for Coach Goff that he was able to you know keep the standard there, and someone else came in and seemed like they're dropping the ball. So. Well, we don't have any FCS lines, thanks to win bet, but what are some big matchups across the Southland Conference this week, Patrick? Well, the big matchup this week in the Southland Conference, Incarnate Word at Texas A&M Commerce. That is a huge game. As a matter a of fact, I, I should pull up the Southland Conference uh, standings here. And real quick, I should have done that before we started. 
I'm pretty sure Southland Conference football. There we go. That's what I want. I want the standings. If this computer could, you know, actually act like a computer for once, that'd be great. All right, Southland Conference. There we go. So yeah, uh, Texas A&M Commerce three and zero in conference. Incarnate Word three and one in conference right now. So big matchup there. Obviously, this will be the uh, big, you know. A driver's seat game if Incarnate Word can get the win here, they'll move back to well, they won't they won't move in the front of the standings, but I think they still have and Northwestern State's also in there, by the way, as well at three and zero. but Incarnate Word still has Northwestern State. So we'll um you know, we'll see what happens. It's gonna be a really good game, obviously. Incarnate Word's offense behind um Lindsey Scott. Uh, doing just tremendous things. And uh, Texas and Commerce, first year in the league, really uh, been shaking some feathers, uh, you know, making an impact. So uh, that's easily the game of the week in the Southland Conference. Nichols is at Lamar. Um, that might be the worst game in the Southland Conference this year. Actually, it might be a good game because it's two bad teams. But, um, well, well, of course, Lamar's much worse, I, I would think. But uh, we'll see what happens there. Tennessee Martin is at Houston Christian. Um, Houston Christian stepping out of conference play here for the week. Uh, Northwestern State is off this week, it would appear, from what I can see. Yeah, they're off this week. So they got AM Commerce next week. So if AM Commerce wins to this week, they got a big home game again next week. So AM Commerce is going to get in Cornet Word at home and also Northwestern State at home. But also Northwestern State, they beat Lamar, they beat Nichols, and they beat Houston Baptist. This is who Northwestern State has left. A&M Commerce, Southeastern Louisiana, and Incarnate Word. So two of those three on the road, by the way. So we're going to really find out what Northwestern State's made of next week. But uh, this week, the big game, Incarnate Word at Texas A&M Commerce for the Southland Commerce. We're going to see if Texas A&M Commerce is, is really here to take over the Southland or if Incarnate Word uh, still has a say in the race. Speaking of incarnate word, I read something interesting yesterday on, uh, one of the FCS, uh, groups on Facebook, GJ Kenny, their head coach, he's only 33 years old. I didn't think he was that young. Uh, but he That's played really collegiately young. at Tulsa and they were saying, you know, incarnate word, enjoy it while it's here. Because as soon as the Tulsa job is opening, he gone which I'd imagine as well as he's doing an incarnate word, I'm pretty sure they're firing their coach at the end of the year. Uh, probably so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think that's a safe. Well, I mean, uh, you never know, but uh, odds are good on that one. Yeah. He played for the jets. He played in the UFL with the Omaha Nighthawks. Uh, he played in indoor football with the San Antonio Talons. Played for the Philadelphia Eagles and New York Giants for a while. Then he went to up to the CFL, played with the Stan Peters and the Rough uh, Riders. Mm -hmm. So he's had quite a career. Yeah, good man. Good playing career doesn't always uh, lead to a good coaching career, I guess. Well, not in this guy's case. Seems like he's doing pretty well. Well, yeah, but you're right. All right. Yeah. Anything Let's else down the FBS lines? Line? Now. Oh, FBS. Okay, good. Um, all right. A lot, there's a, like, like I was saying, there's a lot of games that really like drew my interest and in maybe going one way or the other. Let's start with Notre Dame at Syracuse, uh, Notre Dame. You can get them uh, up to plus three right now. Syracuse, you can get them up to the uh, two and a half, uh, right now. Uh, Syracuse, you know, having a really good year. Notre Dame's having an up and down year. Talent-wise, Notre Dame might be a little better. It's at Syracuse, though. It's at the Carrier Dome or whatever they're calling it now, um, the no-AC dome. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I was I, I, th th This one was tough for me. The over-under is 47.5 to 48. That's a, a kind of a low number there, too. Um, I would, I, I'd, I'd stay away from that for now. But wouldn't I, I want to give a slight lean to Notre Dame. Um, but Notre Dame sucks. Well, you know, Notre Dame's they, they play good some days and then and then some days they don't. So you don't know what Notre Dame team you're gonna get. I feel like sometimes they may play up to their competition. So um, you know, they played uh Ohio State close and then they beat um like they're the only one that beat 
North Carolina. North Carolina's having a good year. They beat BYU. So, you know, they, they lost to Stanford. That's the thing. Like, it, it depends on who they're playing, you know. Um, so, and, you know, they're playing Syracuse, who's a good team this year. Um, you know, if I can get plus three and a half for Notre Dame, I would maybe take that, but I'll probably stay away from that. He also um, lost Arcus. to Marshall. Yeah. You, like, like I said, they, they lost to Stanford last week. They lost to Marshall, but they beat North Carolina. They beat BYU. Um, you know, they, they, they're beating the better teams they're playing, and they played Ohio State closer than probably anyone else has played them this year. So, you know, like it's like a head scratcher. You don't know. Um, Arkansas is at Auburn. Auburn's obviously trash. Um, Arkansas is only a three-and-a-half-point favorite on the road. Um, though I kind of want to lean Arkansas here, but Arkansas is not having as good of a year as I expected them to have. I thought they were going to have a great year, but maybe this is an opportunity for them to really get going at Auburn on the road. Uh, I'd maybe lean Arkansas here, but I'm probably not going to play that. Over-unders at 60 to 61 and a half. I would maybe go that under. That's a lot of that. These are two, I mean, Auburn's not that great of a football team. Arkansas's, not that great either, although they're they're a little better than Auburn, obviously. Uh, 60 and a half to 61 and a half. I would maybe lean the under on that one. Um, Ohio State, this is probably the biggest game of the of the week. Ohio State at Penn State. Ohio State a 15 and a half point favorite at Penn State. Uh, Penn State got their doors blown off by Michigan. Was it last week or two weeks ago? I think it was, it was two weeks ago is what it was. So... Or no, was it? I don't remember. Shit. Um, nonetheless, the last the last couple of weeks have been so busy for me. I can't. I get my two weekends mixed up. But nonetheless, Penn State at home, fifteen and a half is is a lot of points. You know, I I can make a case either way for this. I I wouldn't touch it though. Um, TCU, Penn State beat Minnesota last week. Okay, yeah. So so Penn State's like Penn State's a decent team, like. I mean, they got their doors blown off by Michigan, but everybody's getting their doors blown off by Michigan. But yeah, Penn State, yeah, exactly. Like Penn State's a good team. Um, their quarterback's been playing for him for twenty six years. Yeah, exactly. Um, the but, guy is a vet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm I'm pretty big on. Um, now I'm I'm losing his. I can't remember his name. Um, I just lost it too. I should know it because I've I've talked about him. Um, a lot, but let's see. I'm looking him up right now. Oh no, it's not him. It's not Christian Hackenberg. Um, Clifford, Sean, Sean Clifford. Clifford. Yes, Clifford. Okay. Um, yeah, and he's a very experienced quarterback. He's very good, in my opinion. A lot of people kind of like you know, shit on him, but I think he's not that bad of a quarterback. So, and at home, you know, I don't think Penn State is going to win, but I think can Penn State keep within two touchdowns at home? I, I think that's possible. Um, but this at the same time, like Ohio State starting to really hit a stride, and you know that Ohio State Michigan game is going to be crazy this year. Um, TCU at West Virginia. TCU is a seven to a seven and a half point favorite at West Virginia. Um, West Virginia is just hot garbage. Um, TCU is on a roll right now, but at some point. I'd like to think TCU, it, they're due for a letdown at some point. Like, I, I, TCU is obviously a good team. I don't think they're that good to sit here and run the table. Like, they're going to, they got to eventually lose a game. I don't think it's going to be this one, but I, I think they could certainly, and, you know, they've been, they've been falling behind and coming back and winning these games. Like, a couple of weeks ago, they fell behind to Oklahoma State, came back and won. Last week, fell down to Kansas State, came back and won. I mean, I, you know, it's it's hard. To, I would lean TCU. I really, I might take TCU here. Um, this is one of the, my stronger leans. I would say TCU minus seven. Uh, if you can just get, if, if they go under seven, I'd maybe take TCU at West Virginia. There, the over under is at sixty eight and a half to sixty nine. A lot of points expected in that one. Oklahoma is at Iowa State. Oklahoma is just a one point favorite at Iowa State. Here, this is another one. I kind of want to lean Oklahoma, but Iowa State has a, has a solid defense. Iowa State's defense is, is pretty solid. So, 
you know, when you have a solid defense this year playing Oklahoma, we, we've seen what could happen. I mean, Texas shut them out. I mean, but they were playing with their backup quarterback. Dylan Gabriel's back now, and um, that, that that's a tough one. At Iowa State, tough defense. I don't know. I, I don't know which way to go there. Oklahoma State at Kansas State. Right now, Oklahoma State is a, a one-and-a-half-point underdog. I'm actually debating on uh, taking Oklahoma State out right here. Um, Kansas State's quarterback, Adrian Martinez, um, got banged up last week. Uh, he got knocked out of the game. I think that's partially why Kansas State lost. They were actually rolling. And, um, you know, if he's not playing, I would maybe take Oklahoma State to win outright. Um, Worst-case scenario, I'm really – thinking about taking Oklahoma State plus one and a half here. Uh, Spencer Sanders, the quarterback for Oklahoma State, I think he's one of the uh, most underrated, not talked about quarterbacks in the country right now. He's playing out of his mind. Um, And Oklahoma State, I just think they're a good team with him at at the helm. So I'll probably go Oklahoma State here. I'm going to wait and see what happens. I got to make my bets too before tomorrow because I'm heading to Florida tomorrow where once I cross that line, I'm, I'm... I'm done. I can't can't make, can't make any bets, but uh, I'm leaning Oklahoma State there. Over under is 56 to 56 and a half. Wake Forest at hey, Louisville. Patrick. Yeah. Hey, that Martinez quarterback is that the kid from ne- Nebraska? Yes, that is him. Why in the hell would you transfer from one bum ass team to another bum ass team in your same conference? Kansas State's a a good team this year. It's like, but I mean, I don't get it. And the state's having a good year this year. Get the like, hell out of Tornado Alley. What are you doing, kid? Well, Kansas State's having a good year this year. I mean, they were in the top 25 up until last week. Uh, well, actually, they're still in the top 25. Uh, they're 22nd right now. But, um, you know, they, they got this home game with uh, Oklahoma State. It's going to be a tough It's gonna be a tough game for Kansas State, especially if they don't have Martinez. That's why I'm leaning Oklahoma State. If they don't have – if Kansas State doesn't have Martinez, I would definitely take Oklahoma State here. The line might even move if they officially rule him out, but in college, you never know what's going to happen. Um, Missouri at – no, I'm sorry, Wake Forest at Louisville. I'm leaning Wake Forest here. Uh, Louisville's an okay team, but I think Wake Forest is a much better team than people think. Uh, Wake Forest, I know it's on the road, but four points, I, I would definitely lean Wake Forest right here. Missouri at South Carolina. Right now, on some books, you can get South Carolina minus three and a half. I think South Carolina at home is really good. I would lean South Carolina right here, especially coming off the big win at home against Texas A&M last week. Um, I think Missouri's just not that great of a team. They obviously played Georgia very close, but they're just... South Carolina at home, that's that's really one of the most underrated... Uh, home field advantages in the country. South Carolina at home, minus three and a half against a, a bad Missouri team. I would definitely lean South Carolina. Kentucky at Tennessee. This line was at like 11, 11 and a half yesterday. It's been moved now to 12 and a half to 13. So people are putting money on Tennessee here. You know, Kentucky's a good team, but it's at Tennessee. Tennessee's obviously as hot as donut grease right now. So uh, I don't have a play in that one, but. That's going to be one of the more interesting matchups of the week um, with Kentucky at Tennessee. We'll see if they can keep it close. Uh, USC at Arizona. This is the actually uh, the one play I have thus far. USC is a 15 to a 16 point favorite right now. I have already made a bet. I got USC minus 15 and a half on FanDuel because FanDuel is the only sports book that I actually have money in now. All my, all my other sports books I have zero dollars in. <laughs> but uh, I, I, you know, it's like all the bets, I, all the bets I win are all on FanDuel. So like, I've racked up on FanDuel, but all my other sportsbook accounts are just zero; they're dried out. So I got USC at minus fifteen and a half at Arizona. USC coming off that tough loss at Utah. Playing at Utah is no easy task, and uh, they lost by one. I mean, they could have easily got out there with a win. Um, then they, they had the off week. They've had two weeks to prepare for this Arizona team that's just not on their level. Uh, 15 points. I think USC could win this by 20 or 30 points. So I'm t- I t- already took USC there. Ole Miss at Texas A&M. Both of these teams coming off some tough losses. Ole Miss got blown out by LSU. A&M took one on the chin to South Carolina. Ole Miss is at Texas A&M. And Ole Miss is a two-and-a-half-point favorite. As a matter of fact, 
I would lean Ole Miss here. I mean, I've been big on A and M, but I'm starting to think that they're hot garbage, and you know, and I think they're dealing with some injury problems. Their quarterback got hurt. I think they're down to their third string guy now. Um, I would lean Ole Miss. I think Ole Miss is going to be mad. I think Ole Miss on paper right now is the better team than Texas A and M. Ole Miss is healthier. Uh, and I think they're going to be mad coming off that beatdown that LSU gave them last weekend. I would lean Ole Miss minus two and a half here. Baylor at Texas Tech. Um, Baylor not having the year, I guess, you know, a lot of people expected. Uh, I was expecting Baylor to have a, a better year. Let's see if I can pull them up here real quick. I should have pulled up my uh, fine data that I always look at, yet I don't pull it up for the actual show. Um, so Baylor, uh, the defending big 12 champs, I thought they were gonna have a much better year Where they here. Here we go. This computer, man, I'm telling you, it's, <laughs> it is annoying the hell out of me. I just had Baylor and, um, Texas tech pulled up here, but you know, when computers are slow, they just, there we go. They annoy the hell out of you. So, did you ever have to surf the internet on dial-up? Oh yeah, back in the day. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, I didn't know. I didn't know. I feel like I'm surfing dial-up right now. Um, yeah. So you know, except Baylor's not having the year. They, you know, they're three and three right now. Texas Tech's also three and three. Um, and Baylor at plus at plus three. You know, the, this this model that I'm looking at here. I would maybe this mod because, like I said, I follow. I, I'm I'm subscribed to Sportsline where they do like data and they do like simulations of games and stuff. And right now they're they're projecting Baylor to win this game by a touchdown, and they're a three point underdog. So I would lean Baylor here, maybe even sprinkle some money on that money line. I might even do that here because uh, I trust the folks over at Sportsline. So, but it's at Texas Tech. Yeah, yeah you never know. Uh, and then finally, I have Pitt at North Carolina. North Carolina is a three-point favorite at home against Pitt, who really not that good. I would lean North Carolina here, but I don't know. Pitt could do some funny business and hang, and hang around here for all I know. But um, yeah, so I would uh, I, I would lean North Carolina there. They've been playing very well. Drake May, their quarterback's having a great year, and uh, I would definitely lean North Carolina uh on that one so that's all my uh that's all my thoughts on on fbs lines um uh, like i said there's a lot that, that i have a you know i have a good handful of leans here and uh, i'm gonna definitely play some i already got that one usc play in here oklahoma state's probably my next likely pick and after seeing what i just saw on sports line i, I may go with the baylor bears here i might just take the plus three and uh and see what happens but um yeah, it's uh and and also North Carolina too. Like some of these, South Carolina is juicy for me. Wake Forest is juicy for me. Uh, TCU is a little juicy for me. Um, so like I, there's a lot of there's a lot of ways that I'm like leaning here. So obviously I'm gonna put my picks on the, on the Twitter account, but uh th this is gonna be a fun weekend of of, of betting football. Um, a lot of great matchups betting wise. I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think the Volunteers are the new Jayhawks. I think you need to throw some money down on Tennessee. And with minus 12 and a half against Kentucky? Yeah. Um, I'm, I might do that. I don't know. I, I mean, well, I mean, you know, you told me to bet on the Jayhawks, you know, two weeks ago, and they were my only loss. So Yeah, I know. Um, before that, they were paying off, and you wouldn't pull the trigger. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I here's the thing. I bet on Kansas – twice i won once by by literally one point and was it by one yeah i think it was by one and then i lost the next time so i'm one and one when betting on on kansas and that one win was was barely but you know hey a win's a win i still got paid for it so um yeah it's a uh, tennessee that's the thing tennessee's been playing so well that I feel like Tennessee is due for not necessarily a letdown as in they're going to lose, but a letdown as in they're going to barely squeak one by. And, and Kentucky could be that team. Kentucky's not a bad team. Kentucky's got a great quarterback um, with Will Levis, but 
and it's I would say it's a rivalry game, but certainly a SEC East a uh, bit of a rivalry game. Let's see. Let me look at the sports line projection here for this game just to get an idea as to what these simulations that they do are saying. How much does that sports so, line cost a month? Well, I got a special deal. I think I paid like five bucks for three months. So oh, man, that's pretty good. So I got it for like three months through like January. Um nice. or some I don't know. I got it long enough to for college at least. But um yeah, so their project the, the projected score, and obviously this ain't gonna be the, the score. I mean it could be, but odds are it won't be. Thirty five to twenty two is the projected score based on the simulation. So they got Tennessee winning by about thirteen, which is about where the where the spread is. So like um their play and it's it cool it it low. Play, you, do what? I said you got to get it while it's low. Go get it. Yeah, well, yeah, I should have. Well, I mean, I should have got it at eleven. You know, that's the case. But um, just to give you an idea, uh, Tennessee against the spread this season: five and one overall, three and one at home, four and one as a favorite. But also Kentucky, four and two overall against the spread, two and zero oh on the road, and three and zero oh as an underdog or Damn. a pick 'em. So. Uh, you know, Kentucky's, you know, they're, they're not bad. So that that's, you know, like that they're at, that's in that ballpark, you know, 12 and a half to 13 points where it's really making me question if I want to go one way or the other, I don't, I really don't have a lean there, you know, like I, I feel like Kentucky and it, it, it could be a similar game, like the Florida game, um, Florida kind of came back and, uh, and Tennessee only won that game by five points. Florida actually covered the spread in that game because they recovered an onside kick late and they kind of came back in it. I think Kentucky could, it could be a similar game like that. Kentucky could hang around, maybe be down two scores or down by 17 score a late touchdown and only lose by 10 and cover the spread. So I don't know, you know, that's why I'm, that's why I'd rather not touch it. Well, instead of betting the spread, bet the money line. Well, then I got to lay a lot more juice. Then lay it down. Tennessee's going to win this game. I got it. So on sports line, you know what the money line is? It's minus four eighty. That means I got to bet forty eight bucks to win ten. Oh, yeah, that's I ain't not doing working. that. I, yeah, I'm about to say I'm not laying that juice, man. I ain't laying that. I can't do it. I can't just can't. Yeah, that's dumb. Can't do it. It ain't worth. I mean, it might be worth it to win t- if you you know if I need if I'm in desperate need of ten bucks, you know, then yeah, sure I'll you lay it have down. Forty eight if you were in desperate need of ten. Exactly. So I, I just I can't lay that. You know, that's why I just rather go the spread. Yeah. In this situation, but I don't, I don't have a lean either way on that one. So, right on. The betting on the Bayou show is for entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be professional betting advice. If you lose your big old ass at a sports book, betting on the Bayou cannot be held responsible. Gambling problem? Call one eight seven 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 zero. Stop. And as Patrick said earlier, uh, once he gets some more picks in, he will put them down on our Twitter page, BOTB Media. And then one more thing, I do have my uh, short shot and long shot. Aha, yes. So I got my short shot, USC, minus 15 and a half. I already took it. Obviously, that, you know, there's ever a short shot in my mind. It's the one I've already taken. My long shot, I'm going to go ahead and say Baylor plus three. It's not like a, a, you know, a super long shot, but they're an underdog. You can get that money line at plus something right now. So. I would, yeah, I'd lean, I'd take the Baylor Bears. It was my long shot. I think the last two weeks, my long shots actually have like hit where the spread of the money line. So take that for what it's worth. I might be due for a loss, but I'll go ahead and take Baylor. You need to start betting those those long shots. I I do. Oh, I do bet them. That's why, like, like a few weeks ago, I gave out, I wish I had, well, I can go back and watch the recordings, but, um, you can at YouTube or our Facebook page. Well, I think last week I gave Oklahoma State as my long shot at plus six and a half, and they won the game outright. So, and I bet the spread. I didn't bet the money line. I know I had the Wake Forest money line against Florida State a, a few weeks back as my long shot, and that hit. And I bet that. So, yeah, typically, if like I've, there's a long, like I'm not going to sit here and tell you. Michigan State's going to cover plus 22 and a half if I'm not going to bet it, you know. I'll probably more than likely bet the Baylor plus three, though. Like I said, it's not a crazy long shot, but they're an underdog. 
it's somewhat of a long shot to me, in my opinion. It's my long shot bet, if 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 you will. I might go the money line. You know, I might put a I might put you know ten or I put a little more on the spread, and then put a little less on the on the money line. Try to have action both ways. You know. Right on. All right, Patrick. Well, that's another show. Yes, uh, sir. Looking forward to this weekend again, and um, I'll be out at the beach, so I'll be watching yeah. football on the beach. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, tell everybody, <laughs> tell everybody what you did. How your setup's going to be on the beach. So, I bought a a, a power station. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I bought a, a portable Jackery power station. No, they do not sponsor us, but I'll give them a shout out. It's a 500 watt power station and uh, I'm going to charge it up and I'm just bringing it on the beach and I'm going to have a TV and we're going to plug it in and watch football. <laughs> yes. That's so, that, that's so that's the way to, That's the way to do it, man. That's the way to go. Hell yeah. That was the only option. That was like the option. That was the way, like, I was like, I, we got to we gotta do that. Yeah, man. Maybe, hey, have some people take some video of that and maybe we'll send it to Jackery. Maybe we can get a legit sponsor on this thing. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, we'll see you again next week. Patrick's got to run. He's got to bring his, uh, girlfriend to the airport. Yeah. And then she texted me just now saying her flight was delayed 30 minutes. So it's oh. not as big of a rush anymore, but I'm going to go, you know, I'm gonna go spend a little time with her before I got to bring it to the airport. So right on, man. All right, play it, drive safe, and we'll see you next week. Yes, sir.